wonderful. Um, hi everyone. Hello. Thank you for coming. Um, Marcus has a panel. Why are you there? Uh, why are you here and not at Marcus's panel? It doesn't make any sense. Okay. Uh, hi. Uh, let's just start it right now. I'm, as far as you know, probably I'm C418, also known as Daniel Rosenfeld, without a T at the end. That's a typo. Yeah, yeah sure. So, um, I'm, I'm coming from Germany. That's right next to France. And I made the music and the sound effects for Minecraft. Uh, yeah. And this, pa well, this talk is going to be about making music and stuff. You know, uh, how I started it, what I'm up to right now, and how I'm actually making music. Well, hopefully, if it works. It should work. So, how I started it would be like the best way to go. And the way how I started is with this. Well, okay, um, the toddler that, that, that's unimportant, that's me, that's, you don't need to see that. That's my brother. And he is the sole reason why I'm making music. Um, let me just fade all the music that's going on. Wait a second. <laughs> Thank you. It's a really small resolution for me. Okay, back to me. So while I, that's me, was playing games all the time and wasn't being creative at all, my brother, he was really the creative type. Uh, when he was young, he was drawing all the time. And he really wanted to be creative about basically everything. Um, OK. Uh, see, while, OK, this is good in place. Just lose it. Um, while I think I remember, like, uh, when my brother had a birthday, uh, he got a PC. This thing was running on it. It is basically a screensaver mm -hmm. of some guy that is stranded on an island and it's just an idiot. And I don't know, it's really fascinating me and just having mm -hmm. my brother in this silly screensaver actually made me want to figure out what a computer is instead of just playing video games on the Nintendo or whatever. And I think that's the first step how my brother got me into making music. This thing is really silly. Um, so this has nothing to do with anything at all, this picture, but it's a really nice picture. Um, basically, uh, my brother found, like, I don't even know what it's called anymore. It was some called sort of DOS program. If you guys even know what DOS is, I probably know. No, I don't know. And this is one of the demo pictures of this DOS program. Uh, my brother didn't draw that well. No, he made stick figures. But uh, interesting enough, he made uh, stick figures and like a series of images. And with these series of images, he made stories and re recorded it on a cassette tape. Basically, like some s sort of guy killing some other guy. It was pretty morbid most of the time, but. Uh, he also tried to make music, but mostly with his voice because he only had a microphone. And it was, uh, I don't even remember most of it anymore, but I recall it being very, very silly and nonsensical. But one day I was remembering, remembering playing uh, Tomb Raider, and because I was really bad at Tomb Raider, because I was a kid, I was maybe, I don't know, 12 years old, I used a cheat code to skip levels. And while I was doing that, my brother had a friend over that uh, showed him some sort of music program, which is the Impulse Tracker, which is, uh, let me just show it to you. Escape. Shism. So this here is called Shism Tracker. It's actually Impulse Tracker. This is like a port of the old Impulse Tracker, which was a program that people used in the 90s and maybe early 80s, but probably not that much. And this is a port that makes it work in modern system, and this is awesome that it even works. So, how, well, Impulse Tracker is basically uh, the music program for people that wanted to make electronic music in the 90s, but they didn't have any money to buy synthesizers. Uh, and that's what my brother was basically. So, uh, I'm just gonna, gonna show you this program because I find this stuff amazing. Um, let me just load this song. 
Was it playing? No, it isn't. Okay. Let's see. It's, 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 it's extremely limited. Like, uh, if you see this thing right here, okay, uh, these are sound effects, and you only have 99 wave files, basically. And as you can see here on the white spots, these sound files are playing. And that's basically all you can do with it. Like, this is like the bass drum. Let's see here. This is the synthesizer that's playing right now. And uh, down here, this is the wind and chime sounds you hear. It is, as you can see, you're just looping back and forth. It's as simple as it gets. But I just find it extremely amazing how creative people get with this. For example, this. This looks like a professional song. But this impulse tracker, I would call it really bad, considering what we have nowadays. But people still use it. Uh, I mean, this portation is the best example that it's even still being used. Uh, let me just show you another song. This one is great, though. Um, uh, no, this one. Yeah, uh, yeah. I can just show you how it actually works, how you put in melodies. As you see right here, the numbers 1 to 16, these are the, the, the wave files. And what a guy is doing right here, uh, let me just... If you see a, like a green letter, C4, that's a note. And the, 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 I don't know, beige numbers are actually volume that he manually types in. So, uh, let me just mute this. Oh, it's X! Mute, mute. I'm just gonna mute all but one so you can see that, like number six. If it goes to zero, it gets louder, and it goes to 20, 30, 30, 20, quieter, quieter, quieter. And that guy typed it manually in. How crazy is that? That, that is a workflow. I don't understand that. Nobody would do that nowadays. But people love that stuff. And as a kid, watching my brother do this stuff, actually, let me just show you a fancy video instead. Like, my brother doing this sort of stuff and being really, well, not really good at it, but sort of decent. It's loading. And yeah, I think uh, most of the products you can make of this are amazing. But I, as a kid, I mean, I, I was maybe 12, 13 when I saw this. I thought it was so complicated that I, I will never make music in my life, ever. And I'll just let my brother do whatever he was doing. And as a side note, this song right here, I don't know if you hear it well or anything, but um, I think this is one of the main inspirations of uh, X, OX10C. Um, we don't have some sort of ambientish synthy music. And I think I like this one specifically because I don't know the atmosphere of it, it's really interesting and not really spacey, but experimental enough that I would like to have that in the game. And the video is amazing. Okay, um, that's just enough of it. So, I was trying to find um, easier methods to maybe try out making music because I was fascinated with the process that people, that people even can make music on a computer. I, I didn't understand it at the time. So, this program right here is called EJ. It is crap. It is absolutely terrible and nobody should use it ever in their lives. But I used it and I enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, but what do you see? Uh, I don't know. It's basically a jigsaw of music. They have pre-recorded drum sounds, pre-recorded melodies, and you just put a jigsaw together and have your song. That's as far as it gets. It's... I have fond memories, but no, I don't actually. The next step I tried, uh, my brother even, uh, because I think he also thought like tr using trackers is sort of complicated and finding an easier method. This program is called, in Europe it's called, uh, I think it's called Music Maker, and in America it's called, Ma e no, wait, MTV Music Maker, music, something, something, whatever. Um, MTV doesn't make music anymore, so who cares? Uh, this is much more, uh, yeah, this is much more pro proficient. This runs on the PlayStation 1. And as an interesting side note, Jim Guthrie, who made the music, uh, and still makes the music to Source and Sorcery, and Indie Game the Movie, he still uses this Music Maker program to make his own music. That's, I still don't know why somebody would use a PlayStation to make music. 
Uh, okay, um, but anyway, you can make your own notes and stuff like that, so it's much more interesting, but I just played around with it and just stopped doing it because I realized making music and doing everything yourself, who the hell would do that? It's complicated. Let's stop doing that. So, um, until a few years later, my brother basically said, well, I can't exactly quote it, but he said, do you, oh, oh no, wait, yeah, before that, I don't even know my own, okay. He used uh, Jesco La Bass, which also, an interesting side note, is a program that Notch uses, or did he use in the 2000s and then never made music ever again, because Jesco La Bass is basically impulse tracker plus this view where you can basically in a really complicated way do like a synthesizer then put it in with the arrows into a reverb or echo and then put it into the mixer. It was even more complicated and made me even more depressed that I would never make music in my life. Okay, and next now comes the slide that I actually wanted to tell you about until my brother said that he found this program called Ableton. It's so easy that even idiots can make music with it. And he didn't know it at the time, but I felt I was an idiot. I seriously did. So I tried it out. But the irony is Ableton life is just as complicated. I just didn't know it yet. So uh, let me just show you Ableton. I don't know. And how I started making music, basically. OK. I have to think about this because OS X is not a good, I don't know, function, alt, F11, yes, full screen, okay, um, da -da 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 -da. let's minimize this, this was the song I played at the beginning, let's just chest it for the volume, that was okay, get rid of it because I don't care about it. So when I just started pirating Ableton Live, which I did because it's 600 euros, who pays that? Um, I realized that it automatically figures out the beats per, sec per minute of music. So basically you just drag any random song in, maybe like this one, put it in, or maybe I'll just start. And volume, I wanna talk. If you just change the VPM, it changes with it. So what you can do is, maybe 110 was actually the thing. Uh, you can just put in another song and it fits. And yeah, actually I like to start figuring out that if you go inside, you can even change the pitch of songs. Which is a fun thing to do. Not really, uh, makes doesn't make really a lot of sense. Well, this is a nice thing. And yeah. The thing with that though, my first song didn't sound like this or whatever. It sounded sort of like, uh, like this, no, like, like, no, no, like this, no, um, like this. Uh, wait a second. I have to make it worse. I have to make it worse. It's not gonna be that good. Yes, sort of like this. And as you can realize, this is not a really good song. But. Ableton Life sometimes has these magical moments when the beats per second thing actually works and it's actually fun to just mix up songs. And I thought that's fun, I should just maybe do it in my free time because it's fun and I don't really care that I cannot, can make, cannot make music because I obviously will never make music in my life. But I just did it in my free time and I accepted the fact that I will never make good music. Um, you know, until I sort of realized that actually, if you put your time into it, you maybe sometimes realize that you could even make synthesizer with this thing. This is like a really simple synthesizer, maybe put this here. Yeah, elevator music and Able Knife has built in effects, so it's easy for idiots like me. Let's just put this in and try it out. Wow, no, maybe not. Um, maybe reverb or. Ping pong delay. Yeah. Uh, maybe this. And I realized that you can make pretty good synthesizers very easily with just being a fool. So 
I started tr trying mucking around a bit and realized that making music might not be that hard if you just put it, try to be as simple as possible and not be, I don't know, Beethoven. I don't like Beethoven. He's not really good, is he? Okay. Um, so eventually, like, I actually sort of started making synthesizers and realizing that I can make my own notes and actually my own drum beats. This is the oldest song I have on my HDD. I think I still had it on my HDD because I thought it was silly. It is silly. But eventually I figured out I can make music. Oh, it's not a good song. What's this? No. Uh, sucks. What's this? Oh yeah, that's a pretty good one. Um, BPM is of sort of 80. Yeah, and eventually I figured out that no, Ableton has a lot of built-in stuff, right? But you can also put in external programs, which is actually the, where the magic happens, because most of the external programs are like 100 times better than Ableton. Maybe let's just put this in. I don't really like this one. FabFilter. I'm a fan of FabFilter. Buy FabFilter. They're only $800 a piece. I am not a sponsor, but if you use my coupon, I get 50 euros back. This is an offer. I really like this stuff. Okay, uh, let's get back to the function alt f11 here. Yeah, okay. yeah, what is my next slide? Right, Minecraft. Eventually, I actually managed to make sort of decent music and as I am a video game nerd, I am in a lot of video game communities. So Marcus came into my life and I said, well, I have this terrible prototype, do you want to make music of it? And I, was, I said, sure, I have nothing to do. And then Minecraft exploded and I realized actually maybe people do enjoy this stuff. And one day, Danny Baranowski said to me that I should put my music on Bandcamp. Because I didn't, because I felt it wasn't good enough. And thanks, Danny Baranowski, he's like right in the middle of it. He makes music for Super Meat Boy and basically every other indie game because uh, I hate him. Uh, uh, yeah. And thanks to him, I actually realized that people do want to support me as an ind independent person, because I'm not really working for Mojang, but I do love these guys so much. I love you. I love you. Okay, um... And after I tried selling my music on Bandcamp, I actually got enough money that I was able to quit my terrible job at Free Seniors Medical Care, never work for these guys, they make horrible dialysis machines, and you only work these terrible machines, 15 minutes a day, the same thing over and over again, don't work there. Learn music and make music and sell it. That's what I'm doing. And now we're here. But that's not the end of my panel. Um, so, I want to tell you what I'm up to right now, because I haven't been working on Minecraft seriously for a year now, actually a year and a half, and it's because of two-player productions which, as you might have heard, made a Kickstarter for a documentary for Minecraft. And I always wanted to make a soundtrack to a film, and that sounded so nice, so I said, sure, let's do this. And now we're here, and this is the album cover of the album I'm releasing next month, which is a double album, which is a lot of work. But let me just show you, uh, actually, what's the next slide? Let me figure it out. Exactly. I want to show you how I made a few songs uh, in Ableton, like nowadays. Now that I'm prof polish, proficient enough to actually make music and it's not that terrible, I think. Not sure. I hate myself. <laughs> so, let's see. Okay. Actually, let's just show you the first song I tried to make for them. And the first song was basically a failure. But not because it was bad. Uh, documentary. So, 
This is like a seven minute song that was synchronized to the third day first footage they gave me. Close the door, please. Thank you. Um, uh, it is seven minutes. It's synchronized to the video footage they gave me. Shh. And Abba, so much work. If I put, put two weeks in to just fit seven minutes of the film, and the film had one hour and 50 minutes. So I sort of realized that synchronizing music as a single person and not as Hans Zimmer, who has like a hundred person team that just does the music for him and not he himself, it's not possible to make that. So, the song doesn't exist anymore. Such a shame. So let me just show you the songs I decided are gonna be the main songs. I wanna save this? No. It's terrible. Okay, I should some errors be popping up because it's just my laptop and not my computer. Error, error. This file does not be, appear to be a valid WAV file. I still don't know what it means. It seems to be working fine. Contact, yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, let's see. This is, this is an interesting jigsaw for me to figure out because uh, I have to, I want to show you how I start this song. So I have to go into these 23 channels, the other song has 50, uh, and figure out what was the first thing I started with. It's actually a pretty interesting thing. I, I, uh, two weeks ago, I, I was in Copenhagen with Douglas Wilson, who makes uh, German Best Sebastian Joust. You should all play it and support a Kickstarter for sports friends. It's really good. It's really good. Um, and he asked me, how do you start making a song? I don't know. I just do it. <laughs> It's really weird. I don't know, how, you, how do you start writing a book? I wouldn't know, but like for example in this song, though I, yeah, I think uh, with this huge project with the documentary soundtrack, I always started with a five second to two second jingle sound, which is usually not really that interesting. I don't know why, but I think it felt okay to the project. Let's just look at this. Um, I singled this channel out so only this one plays. And I'm gonna loop it, I think. So I think this is the first thing I did, which doesn't even sound that good. Yeah, that's it. And with that, I, I thought maybe like I put in a bass line. And this is really simple stuff. Look at this. This is just like one, two, three, four notes. Just looping all the time. Boxes. Yes. Okay, and. Then I have chip sounds, which is a really good Game Boy emulator sound thingy. And it's just command bass line. Simple enough. Um, and there's another bass line because I like bass lines and put them double in for some reason, I don't know. You don't have to follow my advice at all. And just put in like some uh, drum set I, that I ripped off from some James Brown song. I don't know. That's a song. And, okay, since I cannot put this down as a song, I have to maybe figure out in the melody. So, change the key. It's also really simple. It's just changing the notes up and down on the thing. That seemed interesting enough. And then I was like, thinking about a melody. Ah. And I was like, eh, eh, okay, that's good enough. Let's put it in. Uh, Yeah, that's, that's good, good. Yeah, perfect. That's a song. Maybe put a second, second melody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good, good, perfect song done. Then I realized, oh crap, there's a documentary soundtrack and I can't make loud music and this is a loud song. Uh, so I decided to make it longer and louder. I don't know. I, I don't understand myself either, so let's see. Ah, interesting. But eventually, uh, and this is a really nice instrument, how is it called? It's an ambira. It's a kalimba, like it played like this. Beep, 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 beep. And it's like a five octave kalimba. It's really insane. And it costs 2,000 euros. I hate myself. You could really sponsor me sometimes. Okay. And this is... This is the same chord progression. It's, it's, it's just like five notes or something. Actually, it looks like 20, but it's five notes, trust me. 
and I really liked the sound of it and I felt we should put it in the entire documentary, I don't care. Okay, actually this has a good reason, um, I just, no it has a good reason, I just liked the sound of it and I wanted to have like a theme of the entire documentary soundtrack, so why don't you put in the Embura because it's, it's unique and it sounds nice. And uh, it's just played out I guess. It's a really nice sound I think. But it's still a loud song, so I realized what should you do to make it a quiet song? And I did I made it louder. <sighs> yeah, I think it's over here it's really loud. But it's slow and I realized if you make it slower, it could maybe be quieter. Yeah. Maybe not show the entire song, it's seven minutes or something. Again. I don't know what I do with my life. So what I basically did to make maybe a song that might fit in the documentary without being annoying as hell is just command L? Yeah, looping. Right. I know this program, I've worked with it for nine years. And I right. I did use this and just made it slower. Maybe yeah, really slow. So let's just go to the part where it's slow. <laughs> and as you might see, my organization skills are really good because none of these channels are named to anything. It's just 112 to 20 something. And these are three songs. Like, there's one song, and there's one song, but uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, what I'm basically saying, if you want to make music, please be organized, not like me. Seriously. So, let's figure out what is what. Maybe it is? Nope. So, what this is, is the same chord progression I just showed you just now. Just slowed down, extremely slow. Like you seen the song before was like 120 BPM, this is 26. And what I put in is just the Game Boy notes I put in before. And that seemed already pretty interesting enough. What I just needed to do is make it a bit fuller so it's actually a song and not just this. So just copy these notes and put in a piano sense something. What's this actually? I don't know actually. Oh, this is pretty interesting. This is a plucked piano. They just pluck it. It's a nice sound. Uh, what's this? Oh yeah, that's an actual piano. There's a lot more pianos. Uh, for some reason I like pianos. I don't know why Minecraft, I don't know. So, and basically I actually didn't make anything new. This is the same song as before. It's, it's really simple in its, it's, in its essence. I don't know. <laughs> but it's, just because it's slower, it actually is, really mellow and actually you could put it behind Marcus being depressed about making Minecraft or something and it would fit in the documentary. And the next thing I just did it was it make it a little bit faster and just do the same thing over again. So it's, then it's this thing. It's the same, it's the same thing again, just, let's see. It's a Game Boy note, just on a piano this time, with the uh, Embira playing. It's the same thing again, just slower. And I think it really works for some reason. If, uh, if I ask people, uh, they like want to compare the, the, the original song between this one, they think this one, this song is actually different, completely different, even though it's the same. You're all stupid. No, it's okay. You're smart people because you didn't go to the notch, notch talk. Okay, um, I think I showed you this song enough. Uh, let me show you a loud song that I actually got into the documentary because it's like, you will see it. I will show you from some, a few videos of the documentary because you, you're nice people. Function, Alt, F11. Oh, oh sex. Okay, so. <laughs> Oh, don't say this. Uh, so this song is a 50 channel song. It takes 15 minutes to load on my home computer. 
It takes maybe a minute here, if you're lucky. And I had to reduce it to like 20 channels because this laptop isn't able to play it. It actually is still not able to play it sometimes. Sometimes it just chops up, so just ignore it. It's, it's, it's part of the song. <laughs> oh, it's so good, it's good. Okay, these are two songs. Oh, this is the documentary, by the way. You're not supposed to see this. Not yet. I mean, I would show it to you, but I'm not supposed to. Ah, okay, let's start over here. And this song is basically the same deal. I just started with a five-second loop again. Let me just find it, if I will ever find it, because this is still a lot of channels. Actually, function alt F11? Yeah. Oh, getting good at this. Right, we don't we need this, we don't need, no, we, uh, we don't need this, we, we need, don't need this. Yeah, okay. Jesus Christ. What did I start with? Oh, operator, yeah. Um, it's a five second loop again. And that's the thing I started with. And my, my dad is actually a guitar player and I'm not really, no, not at all. Actually. But uh, I just took his, took his bass, uh, not even a bass guitar, I just took his guitar, normal guitar, and sh uh, to, to put the lowest note and just toned it down as far as possible so it actually sounds like a bass guitar, so it's actually not. But anyway, I just recorded it for five seconds, maybe less, and that's gonna be this. Yeah, and then I just took the same thing, like this sample again. It's really as simple as it can get, and put it in here. This is the same sample. And I put it over again. And then I just took the same sample again, and just halved it down, I like the speed just half speed. Now it already works pretty good. Maybe a bit louder. Okay, and then I just needed to fill up the spot, so it's an actual song, so what I'm gonna do is just piano, I don't know. This. It's just the same note over and over again. Uh, this maybe. And then I just, like, I was like, it was at 7 a.m. in the morning, I just worked on this song all night and was like, just humming the notes and I decided to, why don't you record yourself? So, it's probably... No, it's not it. Oh, it's over here, somewhere. So, that's, that's me humming this song, sort of. And then I just put in strings. Really simple, as you can see right here. They just go up, down, and up. It's the simplest chord progression you can do. Every chord one can do it. And it's just this. And then just do it the same thing over again, just half the speed. And the same notes again. And then, I don't know what's this, what's this, I don't know. loud yeah shut up um, I think like that is pretty interesting thank you and this is actually it's just a 10 what I'm usually doing is just have this 10 second loop I just showed you and then I basically have the entire song what I just have to do is figure out what I'm am I gonna start with and what I'm gonna put it some stuff in and just fill it out so it's a long song and not just a 10 second thing right and it's really if you start making music you realize that's really the most fun thing just figuring out how the song is supposed to work um, I actually don't know where the song even starts. That's good. Oh no, yeah, that's it. So, so I just started with the bass note, and this actually sounds pretty ominous, but it's really not because it's the it's this just with a reverb. So it sounds like a complicated pad synthesizer, as if I'm as if I'm good at making music, right? And yeah, 
as you can see, it just slowly starts in the other things. And like right now, I'm starting singing. And over down here, we have like a Game Boy. That's an actual Game Boy too. It's just a Game Boy synthesizer. It's really simple. It's the first chord progression I just showed you. It's the same notes. right here is a Moog synthesizer. It does exactly the same thing as the Game Boy. Nothing special at all, actually. But... And then I put some drums in. Ah, yeah. You, you know the gist. And I think this is the simplest song I've ever did. It is also the most complicated song I probably ever made in this program. And as you can see, uh, it's not really hard making music. You just have to be patient enough to know that you will be bad at it for a long, long time until you maybe have like a moment of luck and actually enjoy making music even though it's not a good song or whatever. But that's what I did my, uh, the last nine years making music. I, I just made the songs. I knew they were not good. And actually my friends helped me out because they never admitted that my music was bad, which it was. It was really bad, it was actually really terrible, and they said it's good. They lied to me, just so I keep m making music. And I just realized that nine years now, from now, it's weird. I hate these guys. <laughs> Though, yeah. Um, that's basically it, but I will gonna show you like three short scenes without showing you too much context so as to not be, uh, make two-player productions angry. And just as a disclaimer, this is, uh, this, the video you will see is not a finished product of the film, it's just a prototype version they gave to me so I can fiddle around with it. I don't even have the finished film yet. They have it on Blu-ray somewhere, but they didn't give it to me yet. So. The first scene is the intro of the film, which is the bass line. It's just, just putting in some piano, so it's a little bit different. So it's not the same song over and over again in the documentary, because documentaries tend to use the same song. And I think like that it works pretty good. And I have no idea where they filmed that. I think Scotland? Does anyone know? Because this looks really amazing. Wow. Yeah, the mix is not final, it's a too bassy right now. And that's where the film starts, which I'm not going to show to you because I can't. Or not allowed to. Okay, the next scene is one of the slow songs, I think. Yay! Happy New Year. Minecraft, I think they just change my view of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. So I still really believe that I have got one great game, you know, inside one great game idea that I can inspire a team to turn into a real idea in me. That was, day, that, that was basically the time before Peter Molyneux quit his job and made a new company. So he was pretty depressed at the time. So we fit this song into this uh, Will You Marry Me's video. And I think it fits really well. Well, everyone in the studio is huge, huge fans. Yeah, 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 Minecraft. shut up, it's studio. It is a... Minecraft. Okay, um... I think they just change my... Fire UK, by the way. 